Good morning, and welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord this Sunday, May 24th. Our scripture reading today is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11, titled, Jesus is Taken Up to Heaven. In my former book, Theophus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has sent by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid from him their sight. And they were suddenly intently and they looked intently up into the sky as he was going, and suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who had been taken up from, from you to heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. I'd like to do a song now for the sermon hymn entitled All Heaven Declares. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare with the beauty of the Forever he will be the lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship him alone. I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord who once was slain. As we move forward uh, with managing the COVID-19 towards resuming our normal activities, we passed the Festival Ascension on Thursday, May 21st. One of the readings appointed for observing the Ascension is Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Thank you, Bob, for reading that earlier. In that reading, the followers of Jesus were preparing to resume their normal activities, to come out from sheltering in place behind closed doors, and to return to their pre-crucifixion lives of accompanying Jesus as he ministered to people. 
For 40 days after his crucifixion, death, and Easter resurrection, Jesus had been visiting them. He talked and taught and even ate food with them. And then just before he shocked them by ascending into heaven, Jesus' followers asked him a question as to what was going to happen next. As Jesus answered, they found him, as he had so many times before, giving more instruction about God's kingdom. Jesus' answer as to who will do what after sheltering in place was not what they had in mind. Today, as we prepare to move forward, we consider the question his followers ask and his response. As we break our shelter in place fast, Jesus' words are definitely important for us to consider and may be like his followers, not be what we have in our minds to do. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do we move forward by looking back? The text is Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Here ends the text. Houston, Texas had to decide if they were going to hold on to the past or move forward. You remember the Astrodome in Houston is the first domed air-conditioned indoor sports stadium. When it was built, there was a lot of local excitement and worldwide publicity. Many events were held in the Astrodome, including professional baseball, football, and basketball. After 20 years of being the first city to build a record-breaking, world-renowned building, the city was asked by the owner of the football team, the then Houston Oilers, to make some improvements to the deteriorating structure. With reluctance, Houston did so. Ten years later, the stadium was then 30 years old, and it was showing great need of repair and updating. And besides, it did not have the amenities the newer stadiums did. Bud Adams, the owner of the football team, asked Houston to build a new stadium. The people in Houston were upset. They were still in love with their beautiful historical Astrodome, and they boasted about the building and the championships won there and the many other legendary happenings. Houston wanted to move forward, but only move forward in the Astrodome. So Bud Adams packed up the Oilers and left, relocating his team to the state of Tennessee. The city of Houston was left behind still looking back at their years of past glory. They had tried to move forward by looking back. Things had changed all around them, and they finally recognized they needed to change to go forward. So in order to move forward, the city had to change and build new structures. In the Old Testament books of Ezra and Nehemiah, there is the account of Israel moving forward. The Israelites had been staying in place in Babylon for 70 years before Babylon was defeated by Persia. Then Cyrus, king of Persia, issued a decree to allow the Israelites to get out of Babylon and return to their normal lives in their homeland. When they got back, they found their native land had changed. One change was that the beautiful temple built during Solomon's reign was not only empty and deteriorated, it was gone. The people's response was to start over by erecting a grand and glorious new temple. In the years before he was crucified, Jesus had lived on the roads like a homeless person. He had gone to towns and villages, teaching thousands, healing the sick, and doing many miraculous things. Then Jesus suffered the death penalty for all of us. Not one single human beside him has ever followed God's will. We act and even think about acting evilly. 
Fortunately, Jesus died for all our sins and for the sins of all humanity. Then Jesus rose from the dead and proved that he had opened the only pathway possible for people to be reconciled to God and to each other. Jesus gave many convincing proofs that he was alive over a period of 40 days. St. Luke, the evangelist in his gospel book, reported on the life and ministry of Jesus. Luke continued the story of God's work in Acts. In the first chapter, Luke speaks of Jesus commissioning his followers to give witness accounts to others about Jesus. Quote, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, end quote. This was not a new assignment for God's followers and believers. God had already given to the nation of Israel the task of giving witness to others many years before, as recorded in Isaiah chapters 43 and 44. Jesus here passes this task on to his followers. However, the way they had it pictured was that since Jesus had defeated the enemies among the Israelite leaders and Roman authorities, and since death could not even stop him, and Jesus had shown great power with all other miracles he had done earlier, Jesus would carry on that mission, and they would continue to follow along. And they had something else on their mind, the vision they had for the future, something that would be a benefit to them. They expected to be moving out and up to fulfill the vision they had. Their expectations had come from looking back at past glories. In verse 6, the followers of Jesus gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? They wanted something like the ancient kingdoms of David and Solomon. They expected to have political power, great wealth, military might, territorial control, nation-conquering domination. They were looking forward to a world-ruling kingdom of Israel with Jerusalem as its capital city and its, at its center, the temple building. And they were thinking of themselves. On more than one occasion, they had argued among themselves as to which among them would be appointed to the highest positions in the administration of Christ's kingdom. They gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus answered, It is not for you to know what the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Their question revealed they were looking back at their desires and were not looking forward to the plan of God. They seemed to be concerned about themselves being served and having freedom, comfort, and authority. They were not asking how they could serve God and what they could provide for him and how to bring others into his kingdom. I wonder, and I perhaps you also wonder, if we have similar thinking patterns as did the followers of Jesus. Do we really understand God's kingdom? Do we know our roles in God's kingdom? We already are saved from sin, death, and the devil by faith in Christ and his work. We have received all that we need for life eternally. But do we limit our understanding of our role to what we want to do next here on earth? Are we focused on wanting our lives to return to where they were three months ago, six months ago, five years, 25 years ago? that definitely would be human of us to do so. As mentioned earlier, the city of Houston wanted to hold to the past. 
The Israelites who returned to Jerusalem from Babylon wanted to restore what they once had. The followers who gathered around the risen Christ wanted what they wanted before. And they're looking back. These groups of people were seeking their own comfort, low risk, low responsibility, increased power, wealth, protection, authority, and beautiful buildings. In conclusion, today as our country and church is looking to move the next steps forward, we consider the question, do we move forward by looking back? Jesus said no to his followers. Be open to a new plan. If, like the disciples, we do not go back to where we think we were before we sheltered in place, then what is the new plan? Let's look again at Acts 1. We too may be amazed at the plan for his followers that Jesus revealed. Paraphrasing what Jesus says, there are four steps in God's plan for his redeemed people. One, trust that God the Father in heaven will act when it's the right time. Two, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to accomplish what God asks of us. Three, God asks us to witness to others about him. Four, we are to talk and witness to the people who are closest to us and to those who are near to us and to those a little ways away and even to the ends of the earth. We are to move forward by trusting Jesus for salvation and living for him and giving witness about him. As we move forward, we are to put God in what Jesus has done for us first we are to connect with and witness to other people. We can trust God to lead and provide the resources. We are to move forward, not by going back to the past and thinking what will be good for us, but what will give glory to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds and your faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.